Welcome to the Value Wrestling Podcast. I'm the big time BT model. This is my tag team partner, Hollis Clark. And we are here to give you the best value in pro wrestling sports entertainment today. We are here to be a part of the IWC community the best. We vow to deny you back into wrestling. Welcome again to the Value Wrestling Podcast. I'm the big time BT Baldwin. This is my tag team partner, Hollis Clark. And we're here today to bring you another wonderful episode of the Value Wrestling Podcast right here on YouTube. Uh, I hope you are following us here on YouTube and on our Facebook page uh, that you're going to keep up to date. So today we are going to discuss the pay-per-view event we just got done watching, which is EWN Primetime Live. So we watched uh, Tuesday. This is September 15th episode. Episode one. And it was episode number one. And so we start off episode number one with the dirty daddy Chris Dixon giving a uh, promo, which I thought was a decent promo. Um, he didn't know the name of the show. That was kind of funny. But you can tell it was definitely uh, live and unscripted. Uh, so, or maybe it was somewhat scripted, but he definitely kind of was like, oh, what's the name of the show? Otherwise, I thought he did a good promo. Um, and then we headed into the ring for our first match of the night. Uh, and it was for the West Coast Pro Wrestling Championship, which is too much to say. But anyways, <laughs> it was EJ Sparks as a challenger uh, against Hammerstone, who is the current reigning first and only West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion. So this is a fairly new title, and he won it in some tournament that they told us about. Uh, we had uh, to Joe Gailey, Todd Kenley, Kenley and... Alyssa, I don't never caught her last name. Unfortunately, uh, as the broadcast team, we had a three-man broadcast team, so they filled us in on the Hammerstone. It was a tournament he won the championship in. This was the, the events here. Um, I think it went a little long. I think they gave him almost 15 minutes for the first match. Um, you you wouldn't have expected a squash match out of this one just because... Uh, just a lineup. Yeah, well, I think the way it was and the way he, I mean, Hammerstone's this big guy, E.J. Sparks was like, I, I mean, it was, uh, E.J. Sparks, who they did announce, was trained by Booker T. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Hammerstone, I don't think they told us who was. They didn't say anything. My personal knowledge is that, I'm used to seeing Hammerstone work from Major League Wrestling as a part of the stable, the Dynasty. So, seeing him in this, you know, no fans, Arena, if you will, um, for me, kind of just hurt so the energy. Who did Big Shinga and um, Carl Anderson train? That was Hammerstone. Was no, that? no, no, that was um, the Gold Boy. The Gold Boy. Okay, yeah, that's right. So, oh, uh, maybe EJ it was the, it was the Will All Day and Jordan Clearwater that were trained by because they were trained in the same match. Anyways, yeah. So we had the opening match of EJ Sparks versus uh, Hammerstone, uh, West Coast Championship, uh, a West Coast Pro Wrestling Championship as it was placed. It was a little long for me. Um, I did give away noticing that the route, the, the ring was a little extra bouncy. Made a little extra noise and maybe it's just because there's no crowd in there that, you know, it was just exacerbated there. I, I think this match should have really been a Hammerstone coming in five minute squash. Yeah. I, I think it needed to be like that Brock Lesnar S. Hammerstone definitely shows that quality. He was throwing EJ Sparks a couple times around, but the numerous back and forth false finishes, along with the, um, the, the EJ Sparks come back and bounce back, it was just, it wasn't good. I just, I couldn't get into it. The way the commentators were talking about him, they were talking about how. Um, EJ Sparks had a Muay Thai background and, yeah. and that kind of thing, so it's like, if it was pulled off better, it would have been more interesting, but it was like, it was mentioned and it was vaguely there with the I, I, I just, I didn't get any of it, uh, Hammerstone looking like this beast guy, it was just like, the match didn't add up, EJ Sparks didn't look like a, 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 a threat to Hammerstone at this point. I agree. Being the fact that I don't know either of these guys, just looking at them and standing in the ring, you look at E.J. Sparks, you look at Hammerstone, and you're kind of like, so that little guy I'm supposed to buy is a threat to this big guy right now. Like, I'm just supposed to believe this because he has some talent. And again, your commentating team wasn't doing a whole lot to like, get over 
anything. Of course, they also kept mentioning other cards on the match more than they were talking about this match. But in the end, Hammerstone won, retained his title, and it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I, I don't think there was anything great at home. Oh, right home. Uh, I could definitely see this as an, a, it, as an opening match that this could have really hurt them for a lot of fans because it was kind of like, you know, if it's a switch of presenting as your first match, they should have really came out with something maybe a little stronger in the first match. Or if they would have had Hammerstone squash him, mm -hmm. I think you would have had more fans go, oh, okay, who's this guy? I want to know more about him. Exactly. If you would have had a five-minute, throw him around, squash him, one, two, three, moved on. I think he, A, um, would have given us a better match. Um, and, and you would have gotten hammer suddenly. So, yeah, maybe EJ Sparks would have hurt. I mean, in this match, I guess they were trying to get both guys over. That's a brand new show, but I think in this match, the squash would have been best. Mm -hmm. um, and it would give them more time in other places that I think they needed the match time to go to. So, EJ Sparks loses to Hammerstone. Hammerstone retains the West Coast, Champ West Coast Pro Wrestling Championship. And so then we moved into an interview with Nick Aldis, right? Yes, we went to the Nick Aldis interview. We talked about the 10 pounds of gold, the NWA World Championship, the match at the end of the night, the main event against Michael Bennett, um, promising that he's not going to walk out with the title, um, and, and the national treasure and the 20 million nicknames he has. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I, I think Nick Aldis has lost a little bit of his accent. Yes, he's been in the United States for a while, but he doesn't sound like Nick Aldis, but maybe he was different when I knew him as Magnus in TNA. Um, I mean, I haven't paid too much attention to him on NWA Power. I've caught a couple little bits, but it seems like, I don't know. It didn't seem like Nick Aldis I've known. Oh, because he's not. Yeah. I mean, that's actually, when he was doing his thing in Power, that was his whole message is he's not Magnus anymore. Yeah. He's not, and anything of the past that you knew of him, this is the real, his constant phrase, the real deal. He yeah. used that one. Strictly power. business. Um... But anyway, so after that interview, we got a match with uh, the golden boy, Jordan Clearwater, who was the one trained by um, Carl Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I really thought that that bar was set high. Um, he came out in almost a reminiscent of uh, Seth Rollins when Seth Rollins did the uh, Avengers. The, he had the Thano boot as the glove. It was the, mm -hmm. to the uh, end games. So I get it now after he's the golden boy, his finishing maneuvers to minus touch, so he has a golden boot, golden everything. Um, and then he went against Will all day. Uh, Will all day immediately came down to the ring, and basically went after the ring announcer going, that's not how you pronounce it, I am the main event all day, every day, Will all, all day. day. Um, sadly for this, I think again another long match of a lot of back and forth, a lot of false finishes, a lot of you know, and I get some of that to build up these guys, but I wasn't. It, it yeah, part of it was I couldn't tell who I was supposed to like. I, I felt like they were both coming off heels. The way that the Golden Boy Jordan Clearwater walked down to the ring, I thought he was a heel, uh, and we all the way he presented himself. So I felt like these were two heels. I, I kind of started seeing like a Jordan Clearwater, the Golden Boy, come out as a face towards the end of the match, like he got that baby face going, like there was a switch there, but at the same time, it almost felt like they're, and some of the commentating made me feel like maybe he's switching the heel or something, I don't know. It wasn't very clear. I agree with that. I agree with the match, was it was longer than it should have been, mm -hmm. just because, if you want to see some of these characters, a lot of these characters tonight, you can see in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, which you can find on YouTube or if you happen to be in the local area. But the thing is, on a national, a national, international pay-per-view like this, you need to hit it fast, hard, and strong. You have to impress your audience. Yeah, and I don't think they were very impressive. I mean, I think they were holding back a little bit in some of the and some of the stuff they were doing. Uh, towards the end, it picked up a little bit. I think they got their groove. I still don't know how I feel about either of them. I'm kind of like, okay, like, I kind of like Will all day, but that's because I'm inclined to certain flashy heels. Yeah. <laughs> I could like Will all day. I just need to get no more of him. Oh, for sure. At this match, I wouldn't say it was one of the better matches, um, just because they both like. I, I felt like they held, held back a little bit, and it, it was a little bit sloppy. But I mean, for their 
for this first match to see it was it was what it was uh and of course jordan clearwater the golden boy wins and i guess they're pushing him i guess it's the other thing when you say machine gun carl anderson trained him mm -hmm. the expectations that bar rises oh, for sure. I, I can understand that. and then the whole time they were selling him as some threat to the 10 pounds of gold there was those little moments not a whole lot but a couple of mentions about him wanting that goal. Trying to plant the seeds. Yeah, so you're thinking, okay, so this guy should be in the upper mid card, upper main event, and I was just kind of like, mm, you know, I don't, I don't know. No card for now. Developing. So then we went into the women's match: Killer Bay, Heather Monroe, versus Camilla the Brick House. Camille. Camille the Brick House. The Brick House. Like I said, she looked a little bit like China to me, in essence. Um, On NWA Power, she kind of presented very China-esque. Yeah, and I think towards the end when she came out again later, it was very China-esque. And then she was called the insurance policy. They did mention that she was an insurance policy for Nick Aldis previously. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there was a lot of uh, back and forth there. Of like, okay, this may be the present-day China, or at least what they're trying to sell out. Except she looks like she can rest a little more than China could, so... If you want to understand Camille's story, all you gotta do is watch the 20 episodes of NWA Power. Because a lot of that is the focus between Nick Aldis, Camille, and the formation of um, Strictly Business. So. But if, if this is your first time seeing her, you still got a, the, the general gist of what she's about. Yeah, yes. No, they definitely did that. And later in the show, she makes another appearance. So we'll get to that. Um, Camille does win simply with a spear. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think uh, Killer Bay Heather Monroe really did anything for me. I don't think she got a little bit of offense, but it was mostly to me. Oh, she got a fair amount of offense. Okay. But that's because you were back and forth doing those things. Yeah. Setting up. Um, but I still would agree with you. Heather Monroe, she's okay, but she's not a main event to me. Yeah, I guess she's just, she just felt like a jobber and. Camille the Trees are like a good jobber in some ways. So, then we moved into the tag team match, which I was thinking at this point was a complete waste of time on this card. This was a stupid match. This was a waste of a match in my eyes. You had the tribe Navajo Warrior and Hawaiian Lion taking on the Wolf Daddies, Jacob Zaddies, Zaddies Wolf Zaddies, Jacob Cabrera and Bad News Tito. And. This match broke down in the midst of it, like all four competitors were in the ring, and the ref wasn't even trying to do anything. You know, she walked over to one group and said no, and then walked over to the other two and said no, and then she just kind of gave up on the whole thing, and the whole thing just kind of collapsed in on itself. Um, several false finishes, several delays, and like there was that one pin and temp on the uh, Wolf Zaddies. Um, I forget which one had it. The tribe had the pin, and the other guy got in there, but he, his buddy kicked out, and they still tried, oh, he made the save. I'm like, no, the other guy kicked out. I mean, it was, I wasn't impressed, and there's some other stuff we'll get into here. I, I wasn't impressed with either team. Uh, it looked like two young guys against two old dudes, and nobody came out a winner because they went to a time limit draw, which just tells me we're going to see this match again sooner than later, and I'm like, I don't know if I do. I mean, I'm like... Neither team did anything for me. I look at the not the tribe and go, okay, these are two old guys trying to hold on to the glory days of what was, and the wolf Z that the wolf zaddies the wolf zaddies. I don't even know what that is, um, and I don't know who they're supposed to be because you have Jacob Cabrera and Bad News Tito. I, I guess I need to learn who they are and why their name, what they coexist to better understand it. But I mean, I've seen them like once or twice before, and I still don't know. So don't feel bad if you don't understand. I just. Yeah, these guys look like two young guys that got thrown together and they don't know what they're doing anymore. And then, of course, now we have a warrior and a Hawaiian lion. The tribe have actually been around. They've won tag team goal with other federations out there uh, on the independent scene. But tonight, it just looked like two old guys that were really, they were blown. They were bloated. I mean, by, by midway through that match, they were heavy breathing. They were bloated. They were worn out. And it was not a pretty match. I'm just saying when WWE female referees look stronger than this tonight, and now I'll notice that WWE referees are usually, you don't really pay too much attention to them, I should tell you part of the story. Yes, that's true. And the other thing is I'm getting kind of like, I, women referees, cool. 
But it's like everybody's focused on, look, we got women referees. It's like WWE does it, AEW does it. Well, it's because AEW does it, that WWE does it now. Well, TNA is doing it. Every other oh, TNA impacts doing it. Everybody's like focusing, look, look, we have a female referee. And I'm like, cool, okay. I mean, the referee. But they've also missed the point. AEW with Audrey Edwards, she, she captured your attention a little bit without overshadowing the whole point, without overshadowing the match or anything. Where they just happen to have females in other federations, and it's like, okay, and? And, and that's the thing, listen, women referee, cool. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Go in there and do that. But the referee's job is kind of in the background. But with the fact, the fact that they focus so heavily on the females, like, look at the female referee. I'm like going, okay, cool. Evolution. Oh. Yeah, I know. I get it. So that match, the Tri versus the Wolves, that is time limit draw, pointless, waste of time, went way too long, ate up too much damn time, and I think hurt the car later. Um, and then we had a match that I thought was going to go no contest. Uh, Dirty Daddy Dickerson, Chris, Chris Dixon, Dixon. Dickerson, Dixon, or Dixon, Dickerson. I don't know now. Dickerson, Dickerson. Dirty Daddy Chris Dickerson came out and took on Showtime. Not every con, but Jordan Cruz. He had uh, Dirty Daddy immediately took out Jordan Cruz, beat him on the ground. It looked like they were going to carry him off. Um, Dickerson was in the ring shooting a promo. Again, another great promo, basically trash and going, hey, is this the crap you're going to send to me? Um, I'm too good for this. Yeah, I, I don't know, kind of an Austin era type of feel, like, yeah, this is all you got. Mm -hmm. um, see, he was good. He kind of got me interested in who he is, even though I don't know much about him. At least he was an entertaining point. One, he was a trash talker. Two, he was more intense than the rest of the car got that, up to that point. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that was a heavy favorite in that whole match. That he was, you know, the favorite. But I thought this was going to be a no contest because he already beat up the guy. He's shooting a promo in the middle ring, and then the guy gets back in the ring. This Jordan Cruz. You lost more than that. You didn't get enough. And then he got back in the ring, and it wasn't really. There wasn't much of anything to really write about. It wasn't a very long match. Thankfully, he did the job. Um, the Dirty da Daddy Chris Dickerson won with a Death Valley Driver. One, two, three, the match was over, and it was like, okay, Jordan Cruz is nobody. I don't know why he even has the name. It's Showtime. I mean, he should just be Jordan Cruz. Um, and first of all, Ilya Skipper had that name beforehand. That next name is also used with Eric Young. It's also used in association with Sting. Well, was, why is he using Showtime? I don't know. So, it's like, I, I yeah. I love that Showtime when this thing would say it's Showtime and they're going to be like, listen to me, why is he after me? <laughs> and you got to go back to Team A, way back when Sting got there and Eric Young and Team Canada. Mm -hmm. Team Canada was around because that would have been that era when Sting would keep saying Showtime and Eric Young would be like freaking out. Why is he watching Showtime? Showtime. It was quite entertaining. Which is also funny because I mean, he was using WCW. So. Yes. It's not like it was anything, it wasn't, you know, anything new as a part of his stick, but it was entertaining. So that takes us to the United TV Championship match. United TV Champion Dan Joseph, who heavily reminded me of a uh, Brian Danielson. Not a Daniel Bryan, but a Brian Danielson. Um, I'm sorry, Dan Joseph is good, but he's no American Dragon. No, he's not an American Dragon, but he looked more like a Daniel, a Brian Danielson uh, to me at the moment as a bad joke. And then he took on Levi Shapiro. Which I guess you know more about Levi Shapiro than I ever known. Um, I've seen clips of him. I know in certain um, indie feds that Brian Zane has managed him. Well, the Brian Zane knows more about him than both of us. <laughs> I would hope. Um, I don't think this match did anything other than fill a time slot. Um, this match was quick, which I think was rushed because the other matches went too long, and I think they were trying to force this to be a quick match. So, stand by. So we had Dan Joseph versus Levi Shapiro. It was a quick match. Um, I think this was a... It was a match. It was a match. Just, um, there wasn't anything to write home. I mean, there was nothing to say other than... Uh, there was not much to say other than the fact that Dan Shapiro came out with a quick drop kick in some moment. It was kind of quick the way when it was just bang, bang, bang. Um, and I think that's because the other matches ran long, so they were trying to quicken up time. I think this didn't help either Dan Shapiro or, Levi, or Dan Joseph or Levi Shapiro in any way, shape, or form. It didn't really let him develop anything. I mean, obviously it didn't look like it was going 
to this grand storyline. But I mean, as a quick introduction, you have um, Daniel Joseph, who's the TV champion, point across there. Um, Levi Shapiro, heel. That's all you really need to know. Yeah, it introduced him, but I mean, again, it was like we had this match really long, this match really long, this match right. really long, and then we had this really quick match, and it's like maybe these two guys should have had more of that time to give us a little more to them. We're like, you know, if you would have had the EJ Sparks versus Hammerstone match, this is that quick squash, maybe this was, you know, where we could have got more time to get to know these two guys because I'd probably be more interested in these two guys because they seem to have more character development mm -hmm. than the EJ Sparks and the Hammerstone. Um, I agree with that. And I would have built the Hammerstone as a monster, and, you know, come in and beat the crap out of that guy. So, it was a quick match. One, two, three. Dan Joseph wins, retains his title, and there's, there's not much else to say. It was... Quit. Finally, 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 the NWA World Championship to 10 pounds of gold was on the line. Mike Bennett versus Nick Aldis. Mike Bennett came in the ring first, had his music play, and then we had the big dramatic spill out of, oh, he's gone back to his name Bennett, and his wife's even to support him is taking his last name, so it's Maria Bennett because. Right. Mrs. Bennett. Yes, Mrs. Bennett. Because in that other federation, they had him take her last name and had him as Mike Canellis in that other federation. And now she's trying to support her man. And I'm going, he was Mike Bennett way before this. He was Mike Bennett in Ring of Honor. Uh, he was Mike Bennett in uh, TNA. And I'm like, just because WWE screwed it up and wanted to come up with their own name and go, oh, Mike, you're married to Maria. Maria's last name is Canellis. We're going to just call you Mike Canellis because we have control over that crap. And then we're going to put you out there with a great beginning, beautiful song, beautiful setup, the power couple, and we're going to give you this great thing that everybody goes, ooh, this is going to be interesting, and we're just going to crap on it, take you off TV, and never do a damn thing with you. And then the virus is going to come along, and we're like, okay, we're going to fire you. Oh, no, we're not going to fire you. We're going to lay you off. And then we'll see what happens. And that was just running WWE. But anyways, Mike Bennett, they did this whole spiel, though. That's just irritating me, because I'm like, okay, thank you. I know what you said for the casual fans to make the connection to get them over, but I was still like, even the casual fans, he didn't have nothing but a cup of tea in WWE to really be anything. But for, again, for those casual fans, that's all they have. Not everyone watched ROH back in the day. Not everyone watched even his TNA run. Like, there are more fans, I think, that know him from his TNA run because it was a big deal at the time. But for a lot of when you're looking at from an international perspective, the little bit they know about him, they just know Miss Canellis. Hopefully he's going back to Ring of Honor. Actually, he's already done a podcast with Ring of Honor, even before this. Yeah, hopefully. So there's a good shot that, as I understand it, like once Ring of Honor is bringing back their live events, no fans, blah, 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 like everyone else. Um, that's why they have the pure title tournament. I don't know if he's a part of that, but um, it looks like he's going to have a, a spot with Ring of Honor. So hopefully we'll see the kingdom come back. That's what I'm hoping. So I did not like the second iteration of the kingdom. Here's one thing I do have to say, Mike Bennett, grow your hair back. Right now you look too much like a crazy Gary Gunn. I'm like going, it, it just, it doesn't work for him. Or maybe that's what, just what you need. A little bit of crazy. No, I mean, yeah, I can get a little bit crazy, but I, I, I kind of like that Mike Bennett. I like that Mike Bennett from TNA. That, 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 that suave, the beard, the hair short. I, he, he got me. This one was like. I don't know. Anyway, so Mike Bennett's in the ring. Nick Aldis comes down. No music. Of course, it's his normal thing. The match starts pretty quickly. And all of a sudden, Mike Bennett with a spear. And everybody getting spear happy. <laughs> I don't get this nowadays. It's like everybody has to do some form for variation of the spear. But anyways, very beginning of the match, Mike Bennett spears the referee straight out of his shoes. I mean, he definitely really messed up. I mean, it's not like he meant to get the referee, but... No, it wasn't intentional. Nick Alva stepped out of the way. He went for a spear. The referee just happened to be in the wrong place, wrong time. Referee went down. Referee was out for the rest of the match. Uh, this match spilled out into the outside. Uh, Nick Aldis took out Mike Bennett with a Tombstone power driver on the rampway. Mm -hmm. And then went to get his 10 pound to go to walk out, and Maria Canales came out, or not Maria Canales came around. She was out there. She came out with my Bennett and tried to be like, No, you're not doing this. You're not leaving. You're not walking out. Uh -huh. uh, Nick all just told her, Oh, you better just get out of the way. And all of a sudden, the insurance policy returned. This is for Camille. We made her presence. It's the insurance policy to back off. Miss Bennett. Mrs. Mrs. Bennett, correct. So, Nick Aldis has Camille, which. 
wonder how Mickey James feels about that. Well, I mean, he's been in the insurance policy, and even when that relationship ended as an insurance policy, she became a member of Strictly, Bi Strictly Business. Yeah. So, I mean, she's been around for, for the last two years. We'll have to see. Oh, there was a lot of false finishes in this match. It was like false finish, false finish. And I'm like, the other thing was there was a lot of false finishes throughout this whole show. And I'm like, a couple false finishes is good. But every freaking match seemed to have like this, oh, we got off there. And maybe they're trying to get this first week and let everybody get their move off and everything. But I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting tired of false finish, false finish. Well, There's always so much. The false finish fact isn't bothering me as much as, I guess at this point, I'm used to AEW. I'm used to NXT. I'm used to a fast-paced product. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely more old school, slower, not as intense, as, kind of like 80s WWE. It doesn't, it's all territorial day wrestling. I never saw really territorial days. I only know 80s WWE, WCW. Well, I mean, yeah. it's old, uh, well, it's in, it's in that era. I mean, there was some of that still going on. It's old NWA, it's old, uh, a lot of it, well, what was it, Global Wrestling Federation on ESPN in the mid-90s? Yeah, yeah. In the early 90s, where, uh, Hot stuff that Gilbert was, and then the Patriot deal. Wilkerson. Wilkerson, yes, before he went to WWE. And when they had the Dark Patriot for a while, mm -hmm. um, I think there were seven other, several other people came through there. Lightning uh, Kid, Harlem Heat. Yeah, uh, Two Cold Scorpio. A lot of guys went through it. So it was, it was that era esque. Um, so, but a lot of false finishes. Um, it was just more than I would like to see in one card, especially it's a new, a new show. Mm -hmm. It's a new program, a new a new thing that they're trying to entice people in. I don't feel like I, I can look over this list pretty clearly, and I don't think there was anybody who was like that stood out. Well, okay, I'll say D Dirty Daddy Chris Dickerson stood out because of his promo work. Yes, fair. Everybody else, who who can you name that stood out? I, mean, I have my favorites, but that's again because I have more background from your time in NWA. Well, yeah, well, I understand that, but from this show, who do you think stood out? Just this show. I, I already have a. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, by, uh, no, yeah, yeah, bias essentially. Well, I understand that, but I mean, it so was hard like, for me to say. They didn't do anything to, to give me anything of like, I want to see this person come back next week. They didn't do anything to give me, like, ooh. You know, um, you had a, a, a time limit draw, and then, uh, good or better, otherwise, I think that the, the finish in this, and of course, Nick Aldis won the match with the Texas Cloverleaf, but only because Mike Bennett passed out. And, and, and I don't know, I almost want to call it a, uh, a Brett Austin. Well, yeah, because well, especially when you look at the clips that WWE puts out all the time, it's like it's just that things like okay, so yeah, he passed out there for one. Yeah, I think it was sweet. Nick Aldis, you need to tighten up on that cover leaf. Like you need to like sit back a little more. Like I, it was a weak cover leaf to me. I mean, not impressive. Um, I wasn't impressed. I'm sorry. Just in that match, I wasn't impressed. Um, I just thought there could be more. I get the passing out. At least that keeps Mike, Mike Bennett from not looking weak. Gives him time to redeem himself. Says, you know, I didn't really give up. I didn't quit. You know, exactly. I passed out. He has a redemption value to him. What they do with that will be key. Yeah. Um, hopefully, maybe that will tell me that they're going to lead Mike Bennett to getting a rematch against Nick Aldis. And hopefully, at some point, Nick Aldis loses the title. Because from what I understand, Nick, Nick Aldis has held the NWA World Championship for a wrong freaking time now. They, he beat Cody Rhodes, mm -hmm. and Cody Rhodes has been in AW for what, almost two years now. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Nick Aldis has held this title for a very, very long time. Because um, uh, let's see, Cody Rhodes had that title, won that title just before. No, he won it from Nick Aldis. Mm -hmm. He won it from Nick Aldis and just all in. Yes. I mean, before AEW was officially AEW, that right. was the first event they did together. He did win that title, and then he later lost it back to Nick Aldis. Cody Rhodes, Nightmare, American Nightmare Cody, excuse me. Yes. At All In, won the NWA World's title. At NWA 70 is when he lost it to Nick Aldis. Back. So Nick Aldis was a long champion before he lost it to Cody, too, because he had gone for a while there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how long. It wasn't. I think it was six months. No, it's not the two year reign that he's got going on now. Which tells me NWA needs somebody to beat him. At this point, not necessarily because you yeah. have to understand 
kind of like AEW in the first in the beginning when they didn't have TV. Yeah. NWA for the longest time didn't have TV. They didn't have NWA power for the longest time. Oh yeah. So as an independent, it made sense for him to be a longtime champion. Oh yeah, yeah. But at the same time, he's gonna, we're introducing him. He's going to be there. But at some point, this definitely means he's got to lead to somebody. Somebody take him off. Mike Bennett's a great person they have right now. I don't know who else they'll have. Hopefully, we'll see more people. Hopefully, uh, James Storm will show up because uh, last I know, he was affiliated with NWA. He was, but his contract apparently ended in February. So, he's a free agent right now. Which is weird because he's also one half of the NWA Tag Team Champions with Eli Drake. How did him and Eli Drake become Tag Team Champions? I tried to get you to watch NWA Power. You're like, now let's just start from this show. No, that's fine. I said start from this show so I can start where I am and get my full honest commentary. I just don't know how, I guess because I'm looking at Eli Drake from TNA. And he's not that much of a different character. Well, and he was a little different tonight because he did come out and do a promo. He, he, he did his face, but that's still, yeah. if you look at a lot of the same mannerisms are the same. No, a lot of the same mannerisms, and it was real, really kind of weird for me to be like, oh, what the hell? But I didn't know him and uh, James Storm were a tag team. Um, that's an interesting <laughs> duo. I it, it is, it is. I, I think, but if he's gone and he's not a part of it, and Eli Drake did his promo today, but we didn't hear anything about he didn't come out with a tag team title. Right. And he didn't say anything about the tag team titles or James Storm, so who knows? Um, could be interesting. It didn't seem like he was going to be challenging like a singles competitor more than a tag team partner. So I don't know. Uh, they, in the, during the NWA Power, they used him in both. Yeah. As, as a tag wrestler and as a singles. They just kind of put him where they saw a good fit for the moment. So, Nick Carlos wins, I think it's sweet, hopefully they're building towards the next big whatever mm -hmm. they're going to do with them, um, and hopefully they do a return match, maybe they do a little, something a little better, uh, and, and if you're if you're building this storyline like this, where you're already growing a lot of sympathy for Mike Bennett, because I mean it was, they sold, hard sold. <laughs> The Mike Bennett, he, he didn't make it WWE, now he's on the Drew Jimson trail. I mean, this is very much uh, reminiscent of uh, Impacts. Differently, but it's still the same idea uh, What EC3 coming back for redemption. EC3 is just doing it in a different way. It's both it's a redemption story, redeeming yeah, itself. Yes, both a redemption time. story, but one is about heart, the other is about calculation. No, I know. And, well, and there, uh, uh, EC3 is doing it more viciously where my calculation Mike Bennett was supposed to be like oh come on feel sorry for the baby face and he loved him that way yes he passed out tonight and he got the stone cold treatment as we've come to know it nowadays <laughs> um and so that definitely puts him on an echelon where he should be in line for you know the redemption of the title and that should be the big payoff um in about three months hopefully if they do it right a slow burn slow build uh, maybe you have one more match and let me call this win uh, by dirty means or something, or maybe have them both go to a double disqualification in the second match, and then you know three, four months down the line, turn of the turn of the year, going into the next year, I definitely think that's when you set up Mike Bennett to win that title. Could be. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at it. Oh, I wouldn't be mad at it. I think it'd be a great uh, direction for him to go, but we just have to wait and see. So that is been the. Pay per view in UWN Primetime Live. Uh, that was episode one. Next episode will come out Tuesday, the 22nd of September, and we'll be watching that and reviewing that. Hopefully, we'll get that done and reviewed sooner than this one. Unfortunately, we're a little behind the curve, but that's life uh, when you have two people with vastly different schedules and things going on, and you need about mm, 45 minutes of driving apart. It, it takes a little juggling and it takes communication and it takes scheduling so that's been it that was the pay-per-view review uh we thank you for joining us on this we hope that you will go ahead and hit that thumbs up and tell us you liked it uh leave a comment below so we know what your feedback thoughts and ideas are and make sure you hit that subscription so you can um you can hit that bell. Yeah. You can ring that bell for notification. He likes it a little too much, I think. But yes, hit that bell so you're notified whenever we upload. Subscribe so we can grow as a as a, uh, a podcast. Uh, we want to be one of the best, one of the top. And we'd love to hear from you. So make sure you drop a comment down below. Big thumbs up. And we thank you for joining us. 
I'm the big time BT Baldwin. I'm Paulus Clark. And this has been the Value Wrestling Podcast.